uh, delighted to uh, be here today. I also have, this is Joe McFadden, by the way, with Sales Portal. I also have Misty Lynn Jabot with me. Hi, Misty Lynn. Good morning. Good. I'll uh, turn it over to Misty Lynn in just a moment. But let me do a couple of housekeeping things. And let me introduce this uh, topic. We've got a very interesting uh, couple of presentations here for you today. Uh, and it, it, it kind of is at an intersection of two audiences call center professionals, those executives and professionals managing call centers, uh, either for customer service or sales, and also marketing professionals who are interested in, uh, in generating high value uh, leads for uh, sales opportunities. So uh, Misty Lynn is going to talk a little bit uh, about uh, setting the stage and talk a little bit about uh, the relevance of the voice channel in this new mobile marketplace. I'm going to talk a little bit about an interesting facet of call center uh, service and sales, how to drive customer acquisition, customer loyalty through partnership programs. <clears throat> uh, I am with uh, Sales Portal. So sales Portal, I'll give you just a minute on that, uh, um, uh, provides a uh, partnership marketing platform. Uh, we create networks uh, for uh, companies uh, to partner and provide the enabling technologies for companies to partner uh, for the purpose of exchanging uh, customer calls through call centers. Uh, very interesting uh, application. Uh, I'll share a little bit more with you at the end of the call. And, uh, uh, and now, if I uh, may, let me turn it over to Misty Lynn. And uh, Misty Lynn, if you could uh, give a little background on yourself. Absolutely. Uh, Misty Lynn Jabot, as, as Joe mentioned, I'm with Point B, we're a consulting firm that focuses on strategic execution. A little background on myself, I really started my career in the mobile telecom world with um, customer activation and customer care systems and tools, implementing technologies and working with, with call centers on um, really how to engage the customer uh, in, in the process. And over time have evolved to do a host of different things, now really focusing on technology strategy, uh, customer acquisition strategy, and, and growth opportunities for, for companies, especially those that are consumer facing and, and working in a, in a multi-channel world. So Joe and I are really excited to be sharing some thoughts today. There's a lot of um, evolution in how we can engage customers in, in today's world. Uh, obviously, a lot of excitement around around tools and, and mobile and changes in the marketplace that present both um, confusion and, and lots of opportunity. And so we want to we further explore that. As Joe mentioned, we're really taking a look at how different channels interact and the role that voice can ultimately play uh, and opportunities for partner marketing related to that. We'll, we'll follow a course um, to explore what is happening in the marketplace right now, both in terms of growth of mobile, then take a look at, at channel integration. And this is not so much the channel integration that many organizations have been really driving toward over the, the last 10 years. This is really a new level of integration that is really more about, about channel blending. So we'll explore that a bit more. With that, we will revisit the role of voice and the strategic value that it can have take a look at opportunities for monetizing voice, and with that, um, look at partnership opportunities that, that we find there. We also hope to leave a few questions, uh, a little bit of time for questions and discussion toward the end. Yeah, uh, Misty so Lynn, if I, I can, I did, slide. Misty Lynn uh, I did forget to tell folks on the call, if you have questions, you should be able to submit those uh, bottom right-hand side, I believe, of your screen, so feel free to Submit questions during the course of the uh, webinar, and we'll uh, try to address those. If we don't get to them all, we'll uh, be sure to send an email response out to everybody that's uh, submitted a question. Great. Go ahead. Great. Thanks, Joe. So let's move on here, and I think my slides should be changing up for you. There we go. All right. So it is no surprise that there is high adoption of mobile technologies, both smartphone and an iPad, uh, and obviously a lot of um, energy around the opportunities that, that that presents. If you total up both activity that occurs online and activity that, that lives in the mobile sphere, 
in today's world, consumers using smartphone and tablets generate approximately 10% of all internet traffic. Those numbers are obviously expected to only, only increase and, and grow. That presents a lot of opportunities. There's some inherent benefits of, of mobile and of, of integrated kind of phone and, and digital. And it lives in the, the realities of, of having something that's always available, always available, always on. It gives customers tremendous access to information and to uh, company offerings and, and services. It also starts to change expectations of those that we buy from and those that provide goods and services to us. There's a, uh, a need for instant gratification and an expectation around instant gratification. There's also obviously a lot of benefits around geolocation and the ability to understand where your customer is, um, make things more timely and more relevant based off of a knowledge not just of what they're seeking but also of place. And obviously a lot of lift comes from social integration and the, the sales opportunities that that, that that represents. So while we know that there is a lot of growth uh, with mobile, a lot of potential, there's, there's also a fair amount of hype at this point. Um, right now, you have a, a pretty immature marketplace. A lot of proliferation of both applications and mobile optimized sites, but not a lot of things have landed yet in a, in a genuine way. The one exception might be the potential for mobile advertising, at least in terms of ad impression. An interesting example you see here is Friskies has their own YouTube channel and their own series of mobile apps that are allegedly designed for cats. And it's all about these sites. And Friskies has seen a lot of site visits and reviews, hundreds of thousands of visits to their YouTube channel to see cats playing iPad games with each other or with humans. So there's, a, there's an entertainment factor that is allowing for advertising opportunity I, I call it uh, kind of painterizing, and you certainly can get attention in new and novel and, and creative ways. Mobile apps have a lot of potential in terms of the power that they can provide, but at the moment, what's really being consumed is, is games. Nine of the top ten mobile paid downloads are gaming apps today, and most of the the free downloads are our gaming apps. The usage of, of apps is not very sticky. Uh, there's usually about, on average, 2.4 uses per, per download. So it is a, uh, a very fluid world. And in that, it's hard to say exactly where one should be putting their, their time and energy. The potential is very much there, but it is very much evolving and, and immature at this point. It does leave a lot of companies thinking and wondering, where am I going to put my dollars, whether they be marketing, advertising, or, or customer engagement dollars. And with a number of technology platforms uh, and a lack of clarity of who's going to win the mobile platform war, that only adds to kind of the source of cost in this space. At a minimum, you need a mobile optimized website. With that, you need to figure out what platform or support multiple platform, and then you have questions to ask yourself about, about your app presence. So all of the activity and uncertainty in mobile is really putting in question investments in other channels as well, because budgets are tight these days, and a lot of organizations are, are getting squeezed. So it starts to raise a lot of questions of what value do I get out of, out of what channel? One thing we can say as mobile evolves is while it's uncertain where it will land, it appears to be clear that mobile is driving activity across all channels. The reality is the customer does not engage you, the company, or view you solely as a channel or have expectations of you tied to a single channel. The customer has needs and wants to transcend channel. With mobile, their expectations have been raised. They carry those expectations not just from their mobile experience, but 
but also to all ways in which you engage them. And more often than, than not, they're engaging you through multiple channels, sometimes in a single transaction. Companies that recognize this are seeing big benefits. You can see here multi-channel customers spend, tend to spend 20 to 30 percent more money than a single channel customer. Um, and also aligning customer value uh, and channel economics can significantly reduce cost uh, as much as 15 to 20 percent. You, you put those, those two numbers together and that can be a pretty big lift in terms of, uh, in terms of driving margin. Mm -hmm. So if we think less about what is the channel and we think more about what is the value that the customer is seeking and what experience do they seek and organize around customer experience, present the right channel at the right point in time in that experience, there can be, there can be really great gains. Not only do customer needs transcend channel, when you really seek to understand the customer value chain, you find that customer needs transcend provider. If you step back and, and map that customer value, what, what is the end result that they're trying to get to? Some really interesting opportunities start to, to emerge. And this has been recognized in the in the e-commerce world. So this is not necessarily new. But when factoring in all the different engagement um, paths, you, you end up with some additional opportunities. I, I think travel and leisure is a great example. It's somewhat what we have highlighted here. Many of us are frequent business travelers, and we're very familiar with going online to our airline of choice, booking our flight. And then most times, we all stay, follow the same course after that. We book our flight, so we know our schedule and exactly where we're flying into. Then we book our hotel. Once our hotel is secured, then we get our rental car. If we're uh, entertaining clients, visiting with others, we're probably also making dinner reservations. Most travel providers, most airlines, will help you accomplish this entire chain online. And with that, they do see loyalty gains. A problem arises, though. If you are a business traveler, you've already booked all this travel, you did it online, now you're at the airport, you missed your flight, you have a lot of different options in front of you, but sitting in front of your PC is not one of them. Well, what are your options? You're standing in the terminal, you look over, you see there's a long line at the customer service desk. You can go stand in line, or you might pick up your phone. If you are a frequent traveler with preferred status, you might have a dedicated phone line that gets you a customer service rep or uh, an attendant on the other side. They can help you with your air travel. They can't help you, in most cases, with all the rest of your travel needs. Your need at this point is very urgent and very timely. And there's, there's real opportunity to be gained, both in terms of monetizing engagement with customers and in terms of loyalty. If you can extend that transaction, not just across your channel and have a, a seamless set of expectations in the various channels, but also if you can extend that to where the customer really wants to to gain value. This kind of brings us full circle. This is, this is why you saw the cartoon that you saw at the beginning of, of our introduction here, that uh, evolution can be, can be cyclical and, and we tend to find ourselves repeating some trends. Really what we're finding is that tools that are thought of as long established or old tools are, are taking on a whole new value. This very much includes voice. Uh, and it includes partner marketing. And there's real strategic benefit and differentiation to be gained, especially in a, a world that is more and more commoditized. Online commerce, um, quick access to information, data, comparative shopping online has really been a leveler in terms of, of price and presents companies with new challenges in, in differentiating. These are some really great ways that you can differentiate. And one of the good pieces of news here is there's not a lot of additional investment required. Most companies have already made big investments in their voice channel. Many already understand the benefits of partner marketing. This is about providing better value to the customer by stepping back and really understanding their needs 
and then gaining more risk and more return on investments made in the past. So voice becomes more relevant in a digital world, especially if you want to be a, a leader versus a, a follower. Done well, uh, it can very much lift sales. There's a ability to understand the need of the customer in a live voice call that you don't have in, in other settings. So relevance is something that you can um, really uh, leverage and, and serve. And voice experiences are hard to replicate. It's very easy to go online and see what your competitors are doing because there's full transparency. It's very difficult to replicate high quality voice interaction. If voice is viewed as part of a, a multimodal plan, it really drives down um, cost to serve overall. And it has a lot of potential in terms of partner marketing. Historically, there's been some real challenges there. The infrastructure needed in order to enable that uh, has been daunting, both from an investment standpoint and, and otherwise. But there's, there's some new alternatives that, that Joe is going to explore and take a look at that really start to change that game. So, you see here a few pretty familiar uh, logos of organizations who have really set themselves apart by viewing their channels and their engagement differently. Most know the story of, of Zappos and how they took what has often been viewed as a call center, the, the customer contact center, and turned it into a profit center. They have set a new bar in that world and have changed the behavior of many other large players. Walgreens, often viewed as a long-established brand with over 100 years of history, is really setting a lot of trends in terms of understanding what customers want and when. Uh, voice interaction, ordering via phone, immediate pickup, understanding a customer whether they are needing something now or in the future, and serving up their offerings along those lines has proven very powerful for them. Allegiant Air, the regional air traveler, uh, regional uh, airline, they are the most possible airline with a, a record history of um, uh, quarters of profit. And they run a very efficient airline operation, uh, very important in a capital intensive business. But one of their secrets of profitability comes in their partner marketing and how they engage their partners and understand what the, the customer is trying to accomplish. So there's a, a lot of, of opportunity um, to revisit old, old tools and techniques in, uh, in a new way. And I think Joe has some, some pretty compelling ideas that he can share with you on that topic. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Joe and have him walk through a few cases of how you can see partner marketing in particular play out in the voice channel. Great. Well, Misty Lynn, thank you. Uh, that's a good segue. Um, what I'd like to do is take my discussion a little deeper on these last points that uh, Misty Lynn made and share with you um, a, a couple of uh, new approaches <coughs> tied to the contact center and how you can leverage the voice channel, as Misty Lynn's pointed out, and also um, to uh, 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 talk to the folks on the call. Let me put this in presentation mode. Um, talk to the folks on the call who are, are focused on the marketing efforts for demand generation, lead generation, and how we can begin to leverage live customer engagements over the voice channel um, for that purpose. So uh, those are the two areas that I'm going to focus on. This is all about two key um, uh, uh, requirements. How do I begin to drive customer acquisition as a marketing professional, but as a call center professional, how can I really extend my brand? How can I extend the experience of the customer by bringing in partnerships that add value to that uh, experience and therefore build on uh, uh, customer loyalty? <clears throat> what I'd like to do is start with um, the uh, draw the analogy between what we're familiar with today is a, is a partnership experience um, for offline, social, online, and affiliate programs and point out um, a gap uh, today that, that exists in the voice channel. Um, today, marketing individuals have a lot of choices uh, to engage the customer online. Um, what's lacking is this opportunity, and I'll refer to this as a, a voice commerce or v-commerce 
opportunity. This opportunity that's going to be driven in part by the mobile experience uh, and, and how can we now take advantage of that to engage the customer on their terms but in a way that's a richer experience for that customer and in a way that's consistent with the other channels, in particular consistent with online search and, and in particular uh, affiliate program uh, uh, opportunities online. Uh, many of you are familiar with Google AdSense, this ability to uh, online uh, to partner, set up partnerships with uh, relevant companies that offer like or complementary uh, uh, services that reach the same uh, customer demographics and uh, uh, the ability to uh, purchase ad, ad space online on different websites. <clears throat> it is that uh, capability that I want to try to tie in with a, on the voice channel. And I'll share with you a couple of uh, uh, data points for that. Um, first, what are some of the, the factors driving this notion of voice commerce or v-commerce moving forward? Clearly, it's all about the smartphone adoption, as Misty Lynn showed uh, some of those numbers. And I'll, I'll make the argument that um, the form factors for uh, smartphone really favor voice. <clears throat> this notion of uh, uh, just the, the, the size of the device inhibiting my ability to do complex transactions on the phone, wherever I may be. Um, and, and this ability moving forward to quickly access a live person to help in those efforts. I think that, that becomes something that's a, a, an interesting customer engagement dynamic uh, on the smartphone. And, and these voice and web inter integrations will favor uh, uh, the use of these things. How can I submit my brand um, versus how can I drive more business through the voice channel through direct response and and, and this is some of the uh, group uh, recently <coughs> excuse me I have a bit of a cold um, here you can see this was a uh, some uh, survey research done with uh, large brand agencies and uh, in this case you can see that um, the, the the sense and the feeling about um, wanting and needing to drive more phone calls as a uh, response to advertising, both digital and uh, mobile, mobile digital as well, is a, a huge response here. 61% uh, very likely to drive um, more uh, call to actions to, the, to a phone call uh, with their digital advertising. 34% likely to do that. These are, these are a very large numbers. So, the good news is that uh, call volumes are likely to go up, both for support and sales operations uh, for uh, the customer contact center. Um, uh, likewise, here's some uh, additional data here uh, that, uh, uh, that supports this notion of if I can, in fact, uh, drive greater sales conversion rates through advertising as an outcome over the phone, then uh, these marketing professionals, again, are very likely to leverage the phone moving forward. 23% uh, very likely, 39% likely to um, uh, leverage uh, phone engagement as an opportunity to improve sales conversion rates. That translates to the marketing folks on the call to uh, a, a, a premium, a uh, high value uh, a lead based on live engagement in this case. So. Uh, there's some interesting numbers that uh, are starting to be uh, uh, starting to point to phone activity as uh, as the, the right engagement moving forward, especially for uh, mobile users. So there's good news and bad news here. <clears throat> good news is uh, voice is sexy again. Bad news is voice is sexy again. Um, for uh, marketing folks, that looks like it should translate into higher sales conversion rates if we begin to leverage the voice channel in ways that are consistent with the customer experience and supports that customer experience and at the same time supports our interest to um, um, engage customers and generate uh, business and sales. Um, you can think about this as kind of almost a renaissance uh, for uh, the contact center uh, when it comes to customer engagement channel uh, uh, used in a sales capacity but in the case I'll cite and, and walk us through uh, this could apply to both service and sales contact centers. This is not strictly a sales um, uh, environment or situation. 
Uh, so bad news is that y you may have increased volume, which means increased uh, 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 sales and service costs. So the challenges moving forward, which are consistent in the past with contact center, is um, how do I offset the cost of uh, operating my contact center, uh, and how do I weigh those costs against the return on the investment we're making as a business to uh, improve sales, generate revenue? Um, I think you'll see, too, in my example that <clears throat> this is also a classic case of being able to easily turn a cost center, the contact center service or sales center, into a profit center. So uh, in this model that I uh, described earlier, there is this opportunity now to leverage the voice channel, and in particular, I want to focus on how can we expand our reach, how can we improve the customer experience through um, uh, uh, growth and partnership opportunities through that voice channel. Um, <clears throat> and I think what we'll, we're seeing more of now, we'll begin to see a, a larger increase on call-based advertising, performance-based advertising, uh, the deployment of click-to-talk mobile applications, the ability to expand our cross-sell applications within service and sales contact centers to uh, include more partnerships than what's available to us today. Um, all of this will be driven by uh, relevancy and context to the customer in the, ch in the voice channel. So that's, <clears throat> that's the example I want to walk us through here and uh, um, uh, uh, try, try to describe uh, this notion of an online partnership experience but on the voice channel. And, and I'm going to use some examples here that are um, uh, very obvious to all of us. Uh, American Airlines is not a customer of ours, uh, but I want to use that as an example because we're all familiar with the travel industry. Misty Lynn used it as well. In this case, in the contact center, someone calls into the American Airlines uh, flight reservation center. I'm sorry, in this case, they would log into the um, online flight reservation center and uh, set up a flight. Once they've done that, they're now presented with the opportunity to partner with any number of relevant uh, uh, companies, right? Car rental, hotel, uh, local attractions, etc. This is a very common model, typically driven by a trigger event, a purchase of an airline ticket. Um, many companies are doing this today, in, in fact, American Airlines may be as well, um, <clears throat> where there are one-to-one -one partnerships, partnerships set up. Uh, somebody on the phone makes a reservation. We also have a, uh, an option, uh, an offer. Uh, for a rental car, if you need that, I can transfer you. In this case, I'm using Avis as an example. Um, that transaction uh, tr called transfer occurs, and then uh, the uh, transaction is made by Avis. Uh, and in this case, uh, we assume that the partner receives some kind of um, uh, fee for that call transfer at the end of that call. As I say, as good news is, Contact centers have engaged in these kinds of partnerships already. Um, <clears throat> the challenge has been that these are typically one-on-one, -on -one, one-to-one uh, engagements because of the complexity of setting up those relationships. Uh, and, and it excludes a broader set of potential partners. We have to set up business development efforts, typically long-term contracts. So these are non-trivial uh, of business relationships that, that are being set up, not to mention the infrastructure required to transfer calls, manage the, uh, the, uh, the, the performance uh, of uh, contact centers, uh, track campaign effectiveness, et cetera, et cetera. And so <clears throat> that's where I want to introduce this notion of, of what I'll call the Google AdSense model, but for contact centers. In this case, a customer calling American Airlines now has the option of being presented with a number of offers from all relevant partners with relevant products and services. <clears throat> these partners would be pre-approved. And these partners would have the opportunity to bid on those call transfers. So uh, marketing professionals would use a platform like Sales Portal to build a campaign and place a bid to purchase uh, call transfers from American Airlines. Uh, American Airlines would have the choice of uh, deciding who should receive calls um, based on a, a range of factors. It might be the price of the bid, 
It might be relevance of the product, relevance of the customer demographic, might be a geographic um, <coughs> a filter. But in any event, uh, the, the, uh, the partnership is created on an online platform, much as Google AdSense is. Campaigns are managed uh, online. And uh, businesses transacted online, including the transfer of these calls. So uh, once this partnership arrangement campaign has been set up, calls begin to be transferred to the relevant uh, partners. In this situation, we now have an opportunity for contact centers, both service and sales, to monetize their uh, 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 phone traffic uh, while adding value to the customer experience. In this case, these are very relevant partners. And the customer uh, could and should view these calls uh, or these offers as a value add based on their particular interests and needs at that time. Um, the flip side of this for the marketing professionals on the call is that <clears throat> you can also create campaigns that allow you to partner with a relevant set of partners um, and uh, purchase call transfers from those companies. And in this case, you can set up these campaigns quite easily and therefore set up multiple partnerships. You're not restricted to uh, any one or two uh, partnerships. And these partnerships uh, don't need to be exclusive. So uh, in this scenario, Avis would purchase uh, uh, call transfers from any number of relevant uh, partners in the travel space. These are high value opt-in call transfers with a much higher likelihood of, uh, of sales closure rates uh, compared to other opportunities. So with that, you can see the opportunity, and again, I'm, I'm using these um, companies as examples, and the, uh, these are leading companies in the travel space. <clears throat> you can see the opportunity now with a platform that allows you to easily set up partnerships, manage partnerships, manage campaigns, to broaden our thinking about who I might partner with. If I use the travel uh, space as an example, it could be travel products, right, services, insurance. Um, things like luggage. Uh, it could be the typical uh, um, companies, hotel, airlines, rental cars seem obvious. Could be events and attractions. So uh, this ability to expand to multiple partners within a certain category and to expand our thinking about those categories becomes the new opportunity. And again, this is all uh, taking advantage of, of uh, the voice channel, the channel of choice by the customer um, in, in many situations. <clears throat> so why is this so important and valuable? Uh, for two key reasons. One, there's this huge relevancy factor that supports both the customer experience and the marketing uh, lead generation efforts. Um, this may be relevancy of products and services, may be relevancy of customer demographics, may be relevant to a decision trigger event I uh, made an airline reservation. I now need a hotel and car. I purchased, uh, I'm purchasing a home. I need to talk to a lender. I need to talk to a moving company. I need to talk to a secure, home security alarm company. Um, <clears throat> and the relevancy as well is tied to your brand. How do I align with partners that have um, value to my brand, that add value to my brand, and uh, support my brand interests. The second key component here um, is this notion of live engagement. These, again, are, are customers who are oftentimes, what I'll, I'll call, are in stream with a trigger event. Something just occurred. I had my first ch newborn child, and now I wanna, want to um, uh, uh, install uh, home security services. And uh, these calls, by the way, are typically often credit card ready. Uh, and, and given that we now can transfer these calls to the appropriate partner, the expert is going to be connected um, to that customer. Uh, there's very little training. Uh, you don't have to hire for um, uh, sales skills. Um, all of the, uh, all of the um, uh, questions that uh, may come up or the transaction that has to occur will occur on the buyer side um, and uh, with an expert in those products and services. <clears throat> and, 
And the interesting point here is that um, for the marketing folks on the call, uh, we're really seeing some very large numbers here, up to 35% opt-in rates. Opt-in rate in this case being when presented an offer at the end of a call, how many uh, uh, customers choose to be transferred to learn more about that offer. 35% opt-in rates and lead to sale conversion rates of 17%. These are very um, uh, large numbers compared to other uh, channel opportunities for marketing. Uh, individuals. And then I wanted to give one uh, case study as a last point here. Um, in this case, it was a fitness health partner network that uh, we set up on the sales portal platform. In this case, fit fitness uh, vendor was uh, buying call transfers from a diet supplement provider. <clears throat> on the marketing side, on the buy side, uh, the numbers are, were pretty dramatic. 17.07 percent sales conversion rates for call transfers and a 24% opt-in call transfer rate. On the contact center side, this was a simple revenue generating opportunity that had no upfront costs associated with it. On one campaign uh, for only three months, this one campaign generated over $137,000 in call transfer fees for that contact center. <clears throat> So imagine, if you will, uh, if you extended that to the full year, if you extended it to multiple campaigns. Uh, in, in this case, I think there was something in line of uh, 6,000 calls that were ultimately transferred. Imagine the number of calls that are, are coming through your contact center and the, time, the kinds of dollars that can be generated in re incremental revenue. And that's, those are dollars that can be spent on other on funding of other mission critical projects and initiatives that you might have. These might be initiatives to improve customer satisfaction. Uh, they may be initiatives to improve uh, contact center performance. Um, that's incremental revenue that uh, might fund some of those projects. In this case, there was a 65.5% uh, rate of uh, transfers that were billable by uh, the, um, the contact center. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, just to summarize, my key points here is uh, uh, I think there's a, a growing opportunity based on what we're seeing in, in mobile growth adoption uh, to uh, capitalize on the voice channel in very new ways. But um, we all, as uh, marketing and contact center professionals, have to begin to understand that channel, understand the impact on the customer experience, and understand, understand where those opportunities are. Hopefully today I've showed you one area, this notion of leveraging the voice channel <clears throat> just as we have with online partnerships in a way that um, you can leverage partnerships to add value to that customer experience and add revenue to the uh, contact center um, as a profit center. So with that, um, I will, uh, uh, I think we have time for a, a few uh, questions. Uh, let me uh, look here for See if we have any <clears throat> questions that came in, and I'll, I'll throw these out. Misty Lynn, feel free if if you're unmuted, feel free to uh, jump in here as well. Um, first uh, question that I have here: We're currently transferring calls to partners today. How is this different? Um, as I mentioned, uh, let me take that. As I mentioned, um, the uh, typically these partnerships are set up today on a one-on-one -on -one basis. They require quite a bit of business infrastructure and, and uh, 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 support to set them up. They're oftentimes exclusive. In, in, in the case that I'm describing, these are uh, partnerships are quite easy to set up. You can um, uh, identify relevant partners, uh, agree to partner um, using some standardized contracts online, uh, uh, set up campaigns online pretty easily, get approvals for things like scripts, et cetera and then manage those campaigns. So our focus has been uh, exactly what's been effective with online partnerships. How do we recreate that uh, uh, in the voice channel? And uh, that's, I think, a key distinction from how um, folks may be doing it today. Uh, hopefully, we can e Hi. expand on that. <clears throat> um, let's see, another, another question. Yeah, I... uh, let's see. Oh, go ahead, Ms. Lynn. I don't know if you can hear me there, Joe, but I, I did want to expand yeah. on that one a bit. I think that um, part of the art to really generating a, a quality 
engagement and driving loyalty through this type of activity comes in both how you partner the brands, and, and obviously you, you put some attention to that in terms of, of relevant factors and, and timeliness factors, um, but also then in terms of uh, how you organize ecosystems. And I think part of what is, is different here is, is there's a marketplace that enables the activity and the, um, the nature of what is relevant is highly contextual. And with that marketplace and the bidding offerings, it provides a whole variety of factors that, that aid in relevance. It's in part about relevance for the end consumer on the phone, but it's also about where is the best benefit and opportunity for the customers that are interacting with each other. And so to be able to enable that in a, a marketplace that has a full ecosystem around that, the, the one-to-many opportunities that are there is, I think, a very novel uh, setting where you really have more opportunity for revenue than you do typically in, in today's world in that one-to-one -one relationship. Yeah, that's a great point. Thanks for bringing that into the discussion. This is about um, creating a marketplace, but <clears throat> it also potentially I'll, I'll use a fr the phrase recreating a marketplace that you may already have um, um, uh, in, uh, online or in, in uh, uh, retail settings <clears throat> and so in this case it's all about looking in fact one question says I'm currently working with a set of partners online you know can I can I apply this absolutely that's the whole point here is that there's been a gap in the voice channel we can now uh, recreate these rich uh, marketplace partnerships um, uh, and do that in the voice channel uh, to the benefit of the customer and, and the benefit of the contact center Great. Uh, <clears throat> let's see. A uh, couple of other questions. My agents are, are hired and trained as service professionals, and that's the primary uh, purpose, uh, mission of uh, our center. Um, how does this translate? I have been using this phrase, uh, both uh, service centers and sales centers, during the course of our discussion here today. And so if, <clears throat> if you think about it, uh, we've simplified this whole process, so um, you don't have to hire a different type of individual, with different skilled individual. You don't have to train those individuals. Um, we, we uh, in, in these partnerships, uh, create a, a script, and that script is presented at the end of the call to an agent. It could be a service or sales agent, and it's simply reading that script, <coughs> forwarding, transferring the call uh, if the, the caller opts in. So. We've kind of taken that out of the equation. That, by the way, not to minimize that, that has been a huge barrier in the past, this notion of having different skilled agents for, uh, for service versus sales. And many cross-sell programs have failed uh, because of uh, this one issue. And uh, in, in this case, we've tried to take that out of the equation by transferring the call uh, to the domain experts uh, at the partner end uh, of that call. <clears throat> uh, Misty Lynn, I don't know if you, you've uh, had any um, uh, uh, seen any uh, similar experience, had any similar experience uh, in the call center environments, uh, particularly as it applies to cross-selling programs. Yeah, there, there is certainly a a skill set associated with with cross-sell and upsell that is is different than maybe a, a tier one type of of support call, and I, I think. Most organizations have been really working to, to drive more out of their cross-sell, upsell, and, and training is certainly an element. So I, I don't want to discount um, the importance of training. I think there's a, a place in the engagement center for those who have more of a, of a capability, and, and there is a kind of um, a, a routing, not, not in just the, the literal sense, of matching the call type with preponderance for, for upsell, cross-sell, and in this case, um, partner transfer. So one of the things that, that we do when we work with clients in this space is really help them understand um, where they are making their investments in their engagement center and where they are building skills and how and when they have opportunities for, for cross-sell and upsell and, and what training to, to provide. So the, the tools that we've seen uh, from Sales Portal are very simple and easy to use. And then there is an art element as well that really helps drive even higher call acceptance rates. 
Very good. Great. Let me, uh, there's one more question. Let's take that. And uh, <clears throat> I think uh, uh, Misty Lynn, you'll have some uh, input on this uh, as well. Um, this individual is uh, interested to understand, well, <clears throat> how does this um, uh, new opportunities, many options uh, that we have today to engage the customer, but how does this one help me drive customer satisfaction and loyalty while I'm still trying to manage um, the cost of my operations? Um, as I mentioned during uh, my discussion, <coughs> this notion of relevancy becomes extremely important here. Um, and, and, and if you choose the partnerships correctly, if you choose the product relevance correctly and build the campaigns correctly view as a value add is by our uh, clients and, and by those customers being serviced on our platform is viewed uh, as an added value. And, and so there's two components. There's that notion. But there's also the notion of expanding your brand with like brands or brands that have like uh, philosophies like mission, like intent, and uh, and in expanding the options you're providing customers through the, those brands that support your interest as as a business. Uh, Misty Lynn, did yeah, you have I any would, final I comments? Would agree with that. So I would add to that that it really starts with having a very clear understanding of the customer. And sitting back and developing your engagement strategy centered around the customer and the way in which customers need to change. What are those different events that trigger customer activity? Mapping that, that value map um, brings a lot of clarity to how you can best leverage your different tactics for engaging the customer and when. And that's where you really capture both the strategic value and the opportunity to, to differentiate in the marketplace is, is really by understanding the customer well. Terrific. Well, with that, um, let's conclude the uh, webinar. I hope this was uh, insightful and uh, useful for everyone. Uh, please, by all means, uh, feel free to uh, connect with um, Misty Lynn Jabot and myself, Joe McFadden, uh, Misty Lynn Jabot at uh, Point B Management Consultants. And uh, I'm with the portal. Feel free to connect with us uh, uh, over our, our website. And uh, happy to uh, follow up with anyone that has additional questions.